Hello and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Now, the Arawa Consultative Forum, also known as the ACF, was founded in the year 2000. It identifies the Political and Cultural Association of the North and says it is committed to democratic processes within the federal constitution. However, given how identity politics is shaping an ongoing constitution amendment process, how does it intend to represent the interests of a region whose diversity is increasingly coming into sharp relief? On Hard Copy tonight, I speak with the chairman of the ACF, Chief Aldo Obey, who is also the immediate past minister of agriculture. Chief Ogbe, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you very much. Now, the fact that you are the chairman of ACF might come to a number of people as a surprise. They might expect you to be playing a more prominent role in, say, the Middle Belt Forum. Do you get that kind of reaction sometimes? Yes, I do. Um, people do ask um, that same question because some, to some people, the Arewa Consultative Forum is supposed to be um, an association of the far northern uh, social and political interest. Um, as a matter of fact, it is not. I am not the first to be chairman who is not of far northern origin. Uh, Chief Awuni was uh, from Medende Kogi, and he was there. Now, what we realize is that uh, we are looked at by the bulk of Nigerians as the north, anything from Kwara going up. And then the problems that we experience are also intertwined. It's difficult for you to say, I don't care what's happening in Kaduna, or Zaria, or Kano, or Ilorin, or Makodi, right, or Niger. It's a large area. And we also realize that we are the region with some of the most intense challenges you can imagine. We are way behind in education. Our economy is not growing very well. We are very strong in agri. All that disappeared. And then we, we realized that if something goes wrong in one of these parts, it has a way of reflecting on us very quickly. So when I was here in Abuja, when they held a meeting and said, um, our past leader, Kumasi, the IG, IG of police, has passed, uh, we'd like you to lead. I wasn't there at the meeting. But then I got pressure on phone calls, said, come lead because we're in trouble. And bring us together, focus us upon the serious issues confronting this regional area. It, it would seem, though, I mean, when you talk about the fact that you're not the first chairman of, I mean, who is not from the far north of mm. the Arawa Consultative Forum, mm. it would seem that there's been a deliberate policy to ensure that the chairman is not somebody from the far north. I mean, you pointed out Mr. Sonia Awoni, yes. uh, who was also, uh, he was a Christian as well. Yes, yes. Um, and from the from the area, well, North Central. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and an area that increasingly wants to be called the Middle Belt. Yes. Um, how are you managing that particular um, challenge? The fact that increasingly, in, in terms of identity politics, the people of the North Central region, and even some parts of uh, Taraba, some parts of Kaduna, want to be referred to as Middle Belters, yes. rather than, uh, say, Northern. Um, that, that, those are matters of detail. As people say, look, we are middle belt. Some people say we are north central. Some people say we are northeastern. Some say we are northwestern. These divisions have always been there. The, um, the idea of Arewa is to say, listen, we began as a region in the 60s, what they call the northern region. That concept hasn't quite disappeared. I'm aware of the middle belt forum and their desire because there's this feeling about marginalization, that we're left out of what is going on. And the question some of us ask is, if you pull out and decide that you're just middle belt, no longer part of the North, you have your reason. But do you solve the problem? By being part of it, you also help to minimize whatever problems you think you're facing. Number two, the biggest challenge facing us is not political, necessarily. It's economic. And this is what I keep saying to people. I mean, we don't have the wherewithal even to stand and put up a fight should there be one 
uh, 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 seen to be necessary. Number two, the things you're complaining about, you can bring to the table and say to them, listen, we're part of this area from the earlier times. Why are you doing this and not doing that and so on and so forth? And so your organization could prove quite useful, especially when you look at the fact that now, um, as you rightly said, there, there is suspicion. Yes. There is a growing suspicion, especially with the problems. I mean, yes, every region of the country has its own security challenge, which it's dealing with right now. Yes. But that which is confronting the north central region is viewed many times with suspicion by the people of the region uh, at all the parts, especially the northern parts of the country. And this is oftentimes erected at the leadership of the country. Uh, there is a, they suspect a plan to grab their land, to wipe out their peoples. Um, how, how is your organization being a, uh, taking this on board and addressing it you know, with other members of, say, the Far North? We, we do hold meetings. The current chairman of the Northern Governors Forum is from Plateau. It's also a Christian. That, did, that was also deliberate. Exactly. Well, it happens from time to time. These things move. Um, I, Awoni and myself were the only two Christians. But before then, we had non-Christians. Non Aliku Mohammed was, uh, Komasi was. Uh, so it, it moves around. The big issue is provide a forum. Something is wrong, put it on the table. You are doing this, you are not doing that. We should do this, we shouldn't do that. Keep talking about it. I am telling you this, at the bottom of all this crisis is the economy. At the bottom of the Nigerian social and, and, and political crisis today is an economy that is simply not growing. There are suspicions, of course, that some people want to take your land because the Benway Valley is a very fertile area for, say, cattle growing from Taraba to Benway uh, to Kogi, going all the way down to the south. And people say, look, if these headsmen are coming, it's to take our land and drive us out. And we can't allow that because it's actually hurting agriculture. It's uh, leading to fight and people get killed. And I will say, fine, why are you doing this? And this is where some of the things I'm going to talk about came along. Uh, it isn't just today. Cattle rearing has gone on for before we were born. There was no crisis like this. The headsmen came, they ate waste agro, uh, agro harvest, and then moved on and didn't touch people's farms. When they did, the matter was resolved between traditional rulers and the headsmen. All of a sudden, we're seeing headsmen marching in with two, 3,000 cows in large numbers from distant places. They speak no Nigerian language, not even the Nigerian fufu day. They speak languages from West Africa. And they are coming. They don't want to hear about your states, your zones, your religion. They don't know about that. So they move in. They destroy agriculture. They fight with people. And we're saying, but this is heightening tensions. The question is, how are people from the far north perceiving the suspicions of people from the north central? They are aware of that. But like the northwest is in as much turbulence as the north central. Kasina, uh, at, uh, Zamfara, stretching to Niger, there's a lot of tension there as well. So they do view it that way. But on this other side, there are an essentially large Muslim population in the Northwest experiencing exactly the same thing we're going through, and the same as uh, Kaduna South. So it's this thing about the economy, driving people from outside the country into our areas, conducting themselves in a manner that suggests that they are indifferent to the well-being of Nigerians in many parts, and that they are prepared to just move in, destroy your crops, and leave this emotional and, and social uh, 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 fallout for you to manage. In fact, they don't really think about it. The headsman is not worried about which is north central or northwest. He's si simply interested in grazing his cattle. And if you argue, uh, it puts up a fight, which is also absolutely unacceptable. How are you able to manage these suspicious views amongst people that ought to be potential members or it, could be members. It's not very easy to manage. It's not very easy to manage. The people feel very strongly. But a few people also realize that this matter is very difficult to deal with by simply saying, we're not part of you, don't come near here. Because 
Again, there are linkages. Uh, trade, uh, people are in schools in Abu Jaria, University of Jos, University of Makadi, the students from all over the country are mixed up. It's difficult to severe by simply executive fiat. We're not part of this. In fact, it's like saying I'm not a Nigerian because uh, uh, I don't come from this part. Therefore, those of you in the Southwest are not part of me. You are this and that. We are all intertwined somehow. The thing is more intensive discussion and concrete solutions to some of these problems. The problem of cattle rearing has heightened the anger more than anything else in recent times. But like I say, Zamfara, they're essentially maybe 99% Muslim. They're not all Hausa Fulani, they're the Zuru and others who are an ethnic minority group of their own. Uh, even Kasina, the crisis in Kasina is quite intense. Maybe not from headsmen alone, but criminality uh, is very, very intense in Kasina. And then, of course, you don't need to talk of Yobe and Bonu now with the, the theater of war for the last uh, 2010 till now. So these things are coming. The danger is to see it as purely ethnic or religious. It is not. 90, I don't know, 85 percent of the people in Bonu are Muslim, and maybe Kanuri, but they have a crisis on their hands. You were once in government. How are you being able to push this? I mean, I don't know if you had this understanding while you were in government and now that you've left and maybe you're seeing things clear, a little more clearly, perhaps as a result of your position, the current position which you occupy, how are you sending this feedback? Because for some people, they'll say it's, it's, it's a lack of management of, these, of the diversity, which Absolutely. is you know, in the region that it has caused a lot of the suspicion which we're seeing. Absolutely. Now, one, before I left government, we started working on this matter of cattle rearing it was very difficult to get the message across. Maybe I used the wrong expressions. But I definitely knew before, as soon as I was appointed, that this, this style of cattle rearing is no longer fashionable. It can't last. And that's where the intensity has manifested itself. You've got to find a way to confine these cows, rear them the way they do elsewhere, and remove the visible areas of daily conflict. Now when you do that, then you can sit down at the political table and say, listen, what of this, what of that? When do we get a chance to play this role and that role? Only recently um, we saw southern governors coming together uh, to you know, issue a declaration, what is now called the Asaba Declaration, saying no to open grazing, saying they believe in one Nigeria, they want more fairness. They, you know, they issued a number of things, uh, I think amounting to about 10 points. And then we saw the response of the uh, Attorney General of the Federation, which was not received very well by those in the South. Now, for a number of people in the South, they wonder why is it that the Northern Governors Forum had said this same no to open grazing, uh, and now the southern governors are saying it. Why is it that of the southern governors that is causing a bit of uneasiness amongst the leadership of the country? Well, he, he expressed a view which he said was a constitutional interpretation of the matter. For some of us, I also supported this position that open grazing is not viable. And I, I supported the position of not only the southern governors, but the northern governors. I said so in 2016. It can't go on. He said it was uh, of doubtful constitutional uh, 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 viability. And I said, well, it's not just about constitutions. It isn't about constitutions. Having been in the ministry, being in agriculture myself, the social and emotional impact that open grazing is having on the country is too much for us to bear. We have to find a solution. He, he spoke his mind, and he is the lawyer, I'm not, but the rest of us saw it differently. Welcome back. You're watching Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. Chief Aldo Ogbe, chairman of the Iowa Consultative Forum and immediate past minister of agriculture, is our guest tonight. Well, what do you make of the current constitution hearing? I mean, the public hearings on the constitution uh, review. And what do you think? Do you think that 
some of the memoranda which have already come to light would really provide the solution which Nigerians are looking for uh, as the answer to their problems? Some of them will. We have our own. We'll submit today. For instance, uh, the issue of uh, state police, we think it's about time from the experience we have now that we just don't have enough policemen to police this country. It's a huge place. And you would probably need about, in this country, probably a million policemen to make any impact. Now, the federal government can't cope with that. State police would be something that we, in the end, must have. However, how many states can set up a police force and pay them? Because that's not one force you want to set up and, and, and tell them you're owing them salaries. They are armed men. But states will need a police force. There is a more, uh, another talk about uh, the federal structure itself. And there are those who now say, this amendment is not what we want. We want a restructuring. Is that what you're, the ACF is asking for as well? We, we are th we're talking about it. We're not, we're not made a submission on it. But suppose it happens. It will touch some areas of the exclusive list. It will touch in particular the control of resources and the control of revenues and the contribution to the center. Now, these are the main issues which were raised in the 1963 constitution, which a lot of people say was the near perfect one for federalism. But then we ask, why did we kill it? If we do decide, fine, re readjust, let's do restructuring. Are we likely later in future to come back and say, no, it's no longer working? So we are going to this uh, constitutional conference. There are issues we want to raise. First of all, we are saying that a certain blanket immunity for chief executives at certain levels should be reviewed. If it's a social issue, keep it up. But if it is crime, whoever commits crime in office shouldn't have immunity. Number two, allow the local governments to function. This so-called joint account has been the cause of terrible grief and when I was PDP chairman, it's one of the issues I complained about with the governors. They didn't like it. Why would money go to the local government and be under the control of a state government? Well, if any is saying go back, go back to the 1963 constitution. They're saying that's the, that was the closest to, to true federalism. Yes. Yeah. What, what's the thought of the ACF on that? We haven't, we have, we're going to study that constitution and see. If it is the view of Nigerians that that's it, the next question is, are we returning to the regions? Is that feasible? When you think of the amount of work that needs to be done to, yeah. to, to get it would seem, you know, many parties satisfied. Do you think that first, because this is done as a matter of routine, every assembly comes and it needs to do a, the constitutional review, constitutional amendment, and these issues are thrown up. Uh, when the second year, um, a lot of governors just celebrated second term in office, the president as well just celebrated his second term in office, and we have less than how long for us to get to the next electoral cycle. In fact, for a number of people, it has already started. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think that these conversations would yield meaningful results? Looking at, you know, just how good we are in making lots of motions but no movement, especially as elections approach. Well, the thing is, to start and to encourage everybody to exert what pressure they can, bring in your ideas. And in the process, some of the restructuring issues are definitely going to be taken up, talk, taken up under this review. Maybe not all. But we, and, and as regional bodies, will begin to also sit down, set up committees to see what does restructuring entail? And I'm asking the questions. Is somebody suggesting we go back to the Northeast, West, and Midwest regions? Is that feasible now? Are people going to be willing to give up their states as constituted today? Are we returning to the zones as the constituent parts of the new federation? If we have to, what are the implications? These matters are not as simple as they look. But like you say, um, this amendment may not solve all the problems. It may deal with some. Well, let's keep talking. Uh, otherwise, hoping that soon we'll have a major meeting between Afenifere, uh, Ohaneze, and Arewa. Elders, not in government, let's sit down. The thing we don't want is crisis, another war, 
another chaos. Nobody gains from it. And we must avoid it. We must not allow it to happen because, I mean, I am not a soldier. But in 1966, when the Nigerian crisis began, I had to help classmates who were in my school in Benue escape to the east. We dressed up as if we were going to play a football match. We drove from Alede to Tupu, met one major who luckily was from my place and asked me, where are you going? We're going for football. He said, are you stupid? Which football? And I whispered to him, these are my classmates. I don't want them harmed, please. I knelt down, said, go drop them and come back. I'm very near the borders with the east. That's where I come from. We dropped them. It was in that same local government where we dropped them that the first bombs and booms of the gun happened. They were not sounds from a movie. War is evil. War is evil. We cannot, in this generation, in our lifetime, allow it to happen again. What do you think can be done to foster unity? Because when you, if you take a poll and if you listen to a number of people they will continue to tell you about how they are optimistic about Nigeria or how they think and they, they believe in the unity of this country. There's a lot more to be achieved together than, you know, going our separate ways, um, even though sometimes the rhetoric doesn't support it. Um, but how do you think that increasingly we can foster unity if that is what we truly desire of this country? Okay, you know something? I'm going to say something that sounds very strange. At the bottom of all this, it's a faltering economy. Don't invite somebody to your house to dinner and give him an empty plate while you're eating turkey, uh, caviar, crab meat. Tell him, enjoy yourself. His plate is empty. The big debate today is, is it democracy or development we choose? The second question is, are the two mutually exclusive? They're not. The third I ask is, is China a democracy? The big problem, what is really crushing people, is extreme dec declines in the economic well-being of our people. None of us is really comfortable. Young people in particular, who are wondering what tomorrow is for them. Unless and until you strengthen the economy and make it viable and functional. Unless you stop the slide in your foreign exchange rate, unless you stop being a major importer of every imaginable thing, unless you industrialize, it doesn't matter how brilliant your constitution is. It doesn't matter how you preach the big debate, which nobody may be interested in attending, is the economy. What is going on? How do you run a country when industries can't grow? when your interest rates for 35 years have stood at between 25 and 35 percent. I can't take a loan and build a factory. How do I prepare for my grandson when I can't set up a small industry, even processing, I don't know, uh, uh, brown sugar, but I have to import it. So unless and until we face the economy and get it going and compel every state. You've got to get busy growing your economy. That's your primary assignment as governor. It's rough. A young man has graduated. We have 194 universities now. I don't know how many polytechnics and colleges of education. They're turning out these boys and girls every year. They have nowhere to go. You go to a family, there are six graduates, not one has a job. And they're saying, what is this? And you have no answer for them. They are back at home to start a second childhood, begging you for recharge cards and underwear and shoes. But they have a degree. Down there is the cancer. And we are treating it with Panadol, hoping that the pain will go away. Well, let's leave it at this point. Chief Aldo we thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the program tonight. But as always, we want to hear from you. Please use the handles showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Mark Welgo Yusuf. Good night.